The key to life that you're searching for is very simple. Just don't half-ass anything. That's the key to life. And and you're wondering why you're not succeeding. It's because you're half and you need to be hauling ass instead of half-assing it. Let's give 110% today on three. 110. One, two, three. 110. So I'm about to start studying for my lower extremity ortho midterm. I like to study outside in my hammock, so I'm getting my stuff together. I use my iPad. This is me on my um, screensaver. Obviously, I mean, who else? <sighs> who else would be on my screensaver? I'm also going to be bringing my speaker. Now, this chic, sleek, suave design is so effortless, and I just love its aesthetic. And I purchased it at the one and only five below. Yes, yes. I got it at five and below. I believe I paid about five dollars for this. Now that I'm outside, I'm gonna use my cutter to cut those pesky mosquitoes out of my life. And I'm not sure if this is scientifically proven, but I like to spray my hammock because I believe that it creates a force shield around me. The lecture that I'm reading is about the pelvic floor and orthopedics, so this should be interesting. This is your hip, and you have a lot of muscles down there. These muscles are at the floor of your pelvis, so we call it the pelvic floor. Pelvic floor physical therapists, they are able to treat people with incontinence, which is basically not being able to control your bladder or your bowels. They can also help with constipation. They can help with pregnancy related issues in women, just pelvic pain in general. Men with erectile dysfunction, they can help men who have pain with ejaculation. The pelvic floor has five major functions and they all start with the letter S. So the five S's of the pelvic floor are support. Support because your pelvic floor literally holds your organs, right? Your intestines are basically stacked on top of the pelvic floor. It also does stability because it works with your core to help keep you balanced and all stabilized. Sphincter because some of the muscles in your pelvic floor are responsible for opening and closing your bowel and bladder. Sexual function because the muscles of your pelvic floor are attached to your sexual organs. Also sump pump and the sump pump is basically just in reference to how the pelvic floor pumps blood throughout your body, right? So like you need the pelvic floor muscles to contract in order to spread blood. So this is the anatomy of a female. This is the bladder right here. This is a woman's uterus and then this is the rectum. So what happens in prolapse is one of these organs for different reasons will literally start to drag and pull through these openings, right? So here you see this edge of the bladder is pushing its way through the vagina, right? You see this is abnormal compared to this picture here. You see you got three holes, right? One, two, three. The bladder is not interfering with hole two at all. But when you come down here, there's hole one. This is hole two. You see it's real big and spread out because the bladder is pushing its way through. And then hole three is pushed back a little bit because the bladder is like, move over, rectum, I'm here. But you could also have prolapse of the rectum. So again, remember you have three holes. One, here's the second hole. It's bigger because the rectum is pushing its way through. And then that's the third hole. So just again to reiterate, this is bad. Look how big hole number two is in both of these pictures. Whereas up here, this is hole one, this is hole two, this is hole three. Look how small hole two is up here. Prolapse, ladies and gentlemen. I just finished going over the entire lecture, so I'm just gonna recap on the main points. I got it. It's a big ass butterfly. Can you go away? <laughs> oh my God, let's wrap this up so I can go inside. Caffeine, alcohol, and soda irritate your bladders, so limit your intake. Also, if you are interested in physical therapy and you're like, I don't wanna do pelvic floor PT, so why do I need to learn about it? Well, pelvic floor weakness or dysfunction can also 
tie into a lot of other problems that you may see in a clinic, like low back pain. Somebody may have some sort of dysfunction in the bones that form their pelvic floor. So if you're gonna be an orthopedic physical therapist and someone comes in with a broken pelvis, they might have pelvic floor pain and you need to be aware of what's going on down there so you can treat them. So things physical therapists can do to help treat pelvic floor pain, dysfunction, we can do manual therapy on the bones and soft tissue surrounding the pelvic floor muscles. We can do stretching, we can help you do strength. The different cues to get you to activate your pelvic floor if you're curious. They are different for males and females, okay? And I say that because I read this one about males and I was like, what? So it says for men, if you wanna activate your pelvic floor, contract the muscle like when you sit on a cold toilet seat. So I guess whenever men sit on a cold toilet seat, they get a little like Zhoop. But also, so they have some for women that men might be like, what? So for women, you could say, try to pick up a blueberry with your vagina, right? So a lady would have to imagine using her vagina to grasp a blueberry. I'm pretty sure a man would probably be like, what? So anyways, different cues for different sexes. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? Like, not everybody's pelvic floor is mentally cued the same. Keep that in mind, PT, keep that in mind. It is 11.50 now, and I have class at one. I'm about to go whip me up a little bit of lunch. I hope you enjoyed studying with me for my ortho midterm and learning about the pelvic floor. Thanks so much for tuning in. Stay beautiful, stay blessed, and stay positive. Bye, you guys.